Hi, I'm Cynthia. I'll quickly go through the 10 most useful acrylic painting techniques for beginners and I'll also show you some concrete examples of paintings that I made along the way. If you've never used acrylic paint before, it can be diluted with water to make it thinner and more blendable. A word on blending a little bit later. It can also be diluted with this product that I really love. It's called Open Acrylic Medium by Golden and it prevents acrylic paint from drying too fast. And that's the first technique when you use acrylic wet on wet when you don't want to wait for the first layer to dry before you keep on painting and have really nice blending. Dry brushing is a second technique. So that's when you wait for the first layer of paint to dry and when you go to put more paint on the canvas you don't put too much water on your brush. So this way it leaves brush marks and it drags a little bit leaving that nice texture that's called dry brushing. It could be a very nice expressive way to create foliage in a landscape, for instance, or have a more impressionistic approach to painting. It's very often used in abstract art to create really bold contrast. Any brush can be used for this, filbert brush, fan brush, but a firmer bristle will give you the maximum effect. Stippling. Stippling is the motion of dabbing paint on canvas. It gives a random dotting effect that's very effective in rendering foliage on a landscape, trees, even grass. And just like dry brushing, it's more effective with a firmer bristle. Impasto. Impasto is the action of overlapping really thick layer of paint on your canvas to create that 3D effect of texture. It can be done with a brush with your fingers using gloves. Some painters are finger painters. But most often, impasto is used with a palette knife and you could get really realistic mountain tops and uh, like a mountain range with a palette knife the way Bob Ross uses it. It's pretty impressive. Impasto is one of my favorite techniques and using a palette knife can give really bold and expressive effect, especially if it's focused on one area of the painting and having the rest be with a paintbrush. It's super effective and very beautiful. Glazing. Glazing is when you apply very thin and transparent layer of paint and you layer it on top of an existing color. And the way to do it is put just a small amount of paint in matte medium to create a mix that is transparent. And it's used most often to create and paint shadows so that you see the underpainting with a shadow on top. It gives like a really rich and believable shadow that has depth. It's also used to mimic some types of delicate fabrics. Dripping. Dripping is a wild one. It's when you spray a bunch of water on your canvas and you let the paint drip and kind of wash out and create streaks. It's used in abstract work obviously but it could be very interesting to use it in expressive paintings that are halfway between figurative and abstract. The streaks can be super bold if you use a lot of water and you leave it like that but it could be subtle as well if you wipe sections of it with a rag and you kind of fade it within the painting. It's not for everyone but I really love it and when it's used sparingly it can be very effective to create a focal point in a painting. Lifting. This is another favorite of mine. It's also used with water but in a different way than dripping. The key here is to have let's say your background halfway dried so not fully wet not fully dry and to spray some paint where you create a bunch of droplets on your canvas then with a rag or a paper towel you blot it and some of the paint will lift creating this really beautiful unique texture. I love it in abstract work but it could also be a really nice backdrop for a portrait let's say or even to mimic snow, rain, a galaxy, anything you can think of. Spattering, another wild one. It's basically flicking like a mad person some paint on the canvas. Obviously it's used in abstract work, it creates a lot of movement but again it can be used sparingly in a more subtle way. The way I like to use it is to take a toothbrush, an old toothbrush, and flick some diluted paint on my canvas very often to create snow. I think it's one of the best ways to 
to use that technique, snow and a starry night as well. In abstract work, I tend to create little spatters like that in a focused area of the painting as opposed to having it a bit everywhere. Again, it's a really fun one to experiment with. Scraffito. That's the action of scraping away some pigment on canvas, ideally before the paint dries, to create different textures. Most often it's very useful in creating hair or fur for animals or feathers. You can also use that technique to sign your name. I do that a lot. Masking. Usually with acrylic paint, masking is used with abstract art as opposed to watercolor where masking is used to keep the whites intact on the paper. Very often masking tape is used to block off certain areas and create big blocks of colors. Obviously masking tape can be limiting because it creates straight lines but not so much curvy lines and that's why I like to use rubber cement. Rubber cement is kind of like a goopy glue that when it dries it becomes uh, sticky. The exact same glue that you have on the back of a new credit card when you get it that kind of like peeling off glue. I made a full video on this technique. It's one of my favorite techniques, honestly. I really, really love it. And I have a series of painting using that technique. You can use rubber cement to create motifs within your painting. You can use it to write in a quote. That can be very interesting as well. It can be used in many different ways. A super important and useful technique in acrylic paint is blending. Blending can be challenging. I made a full video dedicated to blending. You can go watch it if you want. There's really good tips in there. I tell you everything you need to know about blending. If you love acrylic paint, please subscribe. I'd love to have you back. I'll see you in just a few days for another one. Thanks for watching.